Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Fallout 4. If you enjoy this video, please hack into people's wireless headphones and blast the audio from my videos until their ears bleed, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. So welcome to Boston in the year 2077. Tensions are high because the United States and China are close to all out nuclear conflict and it's yeah, just like real life I guess. This is my housekeeper robot and his name's Codsworth. I don't know why he has a circular saw on one of his arms that seems like an oddly specific power tool. This is the laundry room but every time I try to interact with anything my character says she'll leave it for Codsworth. Wow, of course. Leave all the washing to the male robot who can't even touch himself because he's got a circular saw for a hand. Didn't know I was playing as a bigot. Honestly, this is a broken family. My husband doesn't even look me in the eyes when he speaks. Thank God the doorbell rings and it's a vault tech salesman who confirms we've got a place in an underground vault should the worst happen. All of a sudden I hear crying and Jesus, apparently I'm also a mother. How old is too old to terminate a pregnancy? Let's find out. I head to the master bedroom and grab a pillow off the bed. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm a great mum. I even spin this rocket mobile for the little Malacca. Suddenly a news report comes on and confirms that the nukes have been fired, which you know, isn't great. Silver lining though, we could accidentally leave the baby behind, but no, my husband is apparently trying to win father of the year. All right, we've got to move quickly to ensure we don't miss our spot. I try to trip over this little nerdy kid in the red hat to slim down the herd, but he's quick on his feet. I instead put the burners on and absolutely destroy the competition on the outside track. The difference between them and me is that I take cardio seriously and also that I won't be getting cancer from exposure to high levels of radiation. Thank God I made it just in time. Sucks about Red Hat Kid and of course my adoring family. Oh wait, they're here too, which is just cream on the cake. All of a sudden there's a blinding flash of light, a huge explosion and the ground begins to shake. I fully appreciate the seriousness of this situation, but if any of my team members on Clash of Clans use this as an excuse to miss their attacks in today's battle, I'm so kicking them out. That was a close call. Mrs. Whitfield proceeds to ask if the others who didn't make it are okay. Yeah, I'm sure they're fine, Mrs. Whitfield. I'm sure that when the uranium atoms inside of the missile were bombarded with neutrons, causing a chain reaction which released all of the energy at once, triggering a gigantic explosion which you literally just saw with your own eyes like five seconds ago, it didn't cause any harm at all. I'm sure they're all fine and dandy, Mrs. Whitfield, you f***ing genius. All right, so we obviously didn't get Boston's best and brightest down here, but I say it's time to move on. We'll start a new life for ourselves in this bunker. It'll be nice. The doctors guide us to these cryo chambers like it's Halo. The weapon here isn't Master Chief though, it's that ass. And yes, I did use mods to make it look like she had an unhealthy obsession with squatting. So apparently these pods decontaminate us, but no. The doctors bamboozle everyone and put us all into a deep frozen sleep science. Who knows how long I was out for, but suddenly I find myself unfrozen. It's kind of like the movie Frozen, except instead of an inspirational story about a Disney princess coming of age and harnessing her powers, my husband is murdered and my infant child is taken by a strange man. At least I'm finally free and ready to fight the covenant. I mean, avenge my family. It is sad, I guess, but also how good do I look in this vault suit? I achieved this by combining two different thick mods. Seriously, when I was testing them out, I felt like a wine taster, but instead of wine, it was pixelated booty. The best kind of booty. Okay, I've got to get out of this vault, but unfortunately, there are giant roaches absolutely everywhere. On the positive side, my girl here throws a mean right hook. You think those bruises on my husband came from him falling down the stairs? You see, I can make those jokes because domestic abuse is funny when I reverse the genders. I take a big old drink of water from this rusty sink because staying hydrated is paramount. I then find some Lucky Dip syringes, which should be fun and also a gun. Let's go. Now getting this door open will be a challenging task. Just kidding, one button. 
This is a big moment for us as we don't know how long we've been frozen down here for. It could have been years, tens of years, hundreds of years, tens of hundreds of years, we just don't know. Oh my god, it's brighter than my future as a Christian social influencer. This guy, Barack Lama 5 commented on one of my videos saying, I don't think this guy is even religious. That might be one of the most insulting things I've ever read in my life. I literally threw up on my cats. Cancel culture is coming for me, perhaps more than anyone else on the internet right now, and it's scary. Well, it's just been that one horrible comment so far, but that's how it all starts. Anyway, the world has clearly changed, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to explore. As you can tell, I also activated a mod, which means there is now significantly more regrowth. My neighborhood has been completely destroyed and it's sad to see. We had a lot of great memories on this street. Like when I introduced you to cheeky old Codsworth. Or when we all fled in complete terror moments before war obliterated life as we know it. Speaking of the little son of a gun, he survived and it's nice to see a familiar face. While I stand all sassy and confident, he proceeds to tell me that it's been 200 years since the Great War. He's also insanely violent and extremely good at killing the mutated creatures, which makes me question why a robot with a motherfucking flamethrower was helping raise a baby. Oh my god, I'm a mother. I completely forgot about that. I best go rescue the little tater tot. I might wear this dress as it's more conservative. Just kidding, the skin tight suit stays on just like my suede sandals do when I pay an escort to hold me while I cry. I'm not really sure if I'm heading in the right direction, but is anyone? Impulsively, I jump off this bridge and not only is the river knee high, which itself is a huge safety concern, the water is also incredibly radioactive. Getting minor radiation poisoning isn't the red hot start I was hoping for, but on the plus side, I find a German Shepherd. I befriend the dog and he will now be my companion which is wholesome and welcomed. Not only do dogs improve your happiness, they also help defend you from the wide range of mutated creatures that are plentiful around here. I need a bigger gun and fast. The local town seems to have been completely infested with all sorts of interesting creatures and in the distance I can hear what I think is a school. As I get closer, it turns out there is actually just a heated gunfight going on between a group of survivors trapped in the town hall and some raiders. In hindsight, I really jumped to conclusions here as I did just shoot one of them in the head. They definitely didn't attack me first. Ah well, what's done is done, and are you really playing a Fallout game if you don't go around and loot every single enemy you killed until you max out your carry weight and have to drop it all anyway? It paid off though because I most definitely found my bigger and better gun. I meet the survivors, and wow, what is this, a big peenie contest? This guy, Preston Garvey, flexes his huge version of my gun like we were two guys at a urinal. I'm a grower, not a shower. Metaphorically, of course, as I'm a woman. Anyway, there's a power armor suit that he says I can use to clear out the remaining hostiles while he shoots from the safety of the town hall roof. What a stunning and brave individual. Power armor really is amazing. It's the equivalent of playing tennis with someone and you're doing all right. You've got a strong serve, but he's impossible to break and you're entering a tiebreaker. But then you put your racket away and pull out a Remington 870 pump action shotgun and blow his head off for the easy GG. The only thing that could stop me now is, I don't know, an experimental radioactive fueled giant predator with razor sharp claws. Haha, <laughs> you see how I set that up? Now I'm fighting what I just described. This is an extremely bad example of the technique writers used called foreshadowing, where they set their viewers' expectations. I actually use foreshadowing in real life by telling girls that they shouldn't sleep with me so that when they don't sleep with me, it isn't a shock for anyone. Anyway, Deathclaw 0, Thick Iron Woman 1. I then proceed to mow down all the survivors with my minigun. No, I'm kidding, I don't do that. We actually all slowly walk back to my home straight. Like really slowly, not even a brisk power walk, which seems careless because you know, death claws are a thing and I'm almost out of minigun ammo. We eventually arrive and this group of survivors decide to set up base here and invite me to join. I go and chat with Preston and he tells me that another settlement needs our help. I immediately get crippling PTSD and you know what? No, I'm not going to help your shitey settlement, Preston. I'm going to go and build my dream home. You see, I actually studied architecture for one year before I switched to accounting and I think it really shows because look at this crib. The door opens outwards so you get knocked out every time you enter. We've got these couches designed specifically for heated premarital eye contact. 
I'll admit the second story is where it starts to fall apart a bit, but as long as it's not acid raining, which it often is, the breeze is welcomed. That took me an uncomfortably long time to build and I really should be saving my child. I decide to trek all the way to Diamond City and this is not for the faint hearted. I come across many folks on my travel like Trashcan Carla, and did she pick that name? Anyway, I sell her my wedding ring because girl's gone wild, my husband's dead. I then murder Carla and steal all her stuff because girl's gone wild. I also come across another little showdown between some bandits and a local trader. I try to handle the situation diplomatically for like 15 seconds, but then yeah, I just kill everyone because I figure I can take all of their belongings if they, you know, are not breathing. It's not an easy journey as mines scatter the road, but I did find the modest pelican goggles on Trash Can Carla's bloody corpse, which is just fate. Finally, I reach the gates and make it to the safety of Diamond City. It's a pretty impressive place they've got here. And besides the occasional public execution, it really has the family-friendly atmosphere that I've been searching for my whole life. Besides, in the words of Mother Teresa, who needs a son when you've got a bubble butt? I've got something new in the works that I'm excited to announce to you all soon. Otherwise, thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.